So guys, in this next news story, and it's coming from the West Midlands, two 12-year-old boys have been found guilty of stabbing a stranger to death with a machete in a park in Wolverhampton. Throughout the trial, both boys sought to blame one another for the murder of Sean Sisahi. However, today the jury decided to unanimously convict both of them of murder. They are now believed to be the youngest boys to have committed a knife-related murder in the UK. The youths are also believed to be the youngest children to have been found guilty of murder since Robert Thompson and John Venables were both aged 11 when they were found guilty in 1993 of killing the two-year-old James Bulger. A month-long trial at Nottingham Crown Court was told that Mr Sisahi was shoulder-barged by the smaller of the two defendants who often carried a machete with a 42 centimetre long blade before being punched, kicked, stamped on and chopped at with the weapon. The victim's friend told the trial he was forced to run for his life, but 19-year-old Mr. Sisahi stumbled as he tried to flee from the boys on Wolverhampton's stolen playing fields on November the 13th last year. The court heard that they attacked the victim with such force that in one blow, the machete almost passed through his body. Mr. Sisahi, may he rest in peace, was pronounced dead at 9 o'clock in the evening on November the 13th last year after police were called to the scene. Mr. Sisahi had travelled to the UK with his friend primarily because he needed cataract surgery which was unavailable where he lived in the Caribbean. He settled in Answorth in Birmingham and Judas heard the pair travel to Wolverhampton that November with a third man because this third man wanted to visit his girlfriend in the city. Prosecutor Michelle Healy KC said Sean and his friend ended up in a confrontation with the two 12-year-old killers who had been roaming the streets with a machete while killing time wandering through stone lawn playing fields as Mr. Sisahi's friend visited his partner. Prosecutors say the two 12-year-olds and another 12-year-old acted together to kill Mr. Sisahi after he shoulder-brushed them by a bench. Prosecutor told jurors how he had run for his life after the two boys launched the attack with the blade and turned around to see his friend on the floor and fatally wounded. Having been left traumatised by the ordeal, he returned to Anguilla in the Caribbean after the murder and gave evidence from the island via a video link. The witness said it was a big blade, something similar to a machete. He pulled it out of the sheath from his waist. Sean told me to run. He said, run for your life. The witness said that as the pair ran, Mr. Cesar, he tripped and he was attacked. The prosecutor, Michelle Healy Casey, said the victim had offered no violence and done nothing to offend the two boys. The girl at the scene with the youths said she saw the boys punching and kicking their victim as he lay on the floor. It was not unusual that the boy who admitted possessing a knife had a machete as she said he often carried it around. He thought he was a big time gangster. The defendants said the confrontation began when Mr. Sisahi told them to move from the park bench they were sat on, then got the boy who owned the knife in a headlock. Members of both the victim and the defendants cried and hugged each other in the public gallery as the jurors found both boys guilty of murder and one guilty of possessing a bladed article. After they had murdered Sean, the two 12-year-olds and some friends were talking on Snapchat after a video of the police called around the murder scene was shared in the group and the conversation basically it said someone got stabbed, everyone's talking about it, literally everyone, everyone knows and the pair, well one of them responded with a voice note, it is what it is. Another one says, I'm scared, man. And the other kid said, I'm not. I don't really care. So this is the kind of language, this is the type of conversations these 12-year-old kids were having. Absolute madness. Internet searches on the boys' phones showed that one of them spent a lot of time researching for machetes and other kind of similar weapons. He was also posing for photos with the murder weapon and boasted about it to two girls who had been with the pair in the park that day. He was telling them, check this knife out, I'm a big time gangster. As I said, one of the girls had told police it was unusual for him to carry the machete and basically the two boys would pass this machete between them. The girl also said on the day of the encounter with Sean, one of them pulled the machete out of his trousers before saying to the other one, Keep stepping. In an interview released after the verdicts, Mr. Sisahi's parents said they will never be able to get over the loss of their 19-year-old son who always told them he would shine and take care of them. The father said he feels sorry for the parents of the killers and only hopes that justice is served for his son. They also spoke 
of their shock at discovering the age of their son's killers. The father said, pay attention to your kids. If you see them doing something wrong, then tell them. Check their room sometimes. You don't know what's in there. So check it as you're their parents. This world is a different world now. Kids are dangerous now. If we don't pay attention to them, this will keep happening. I plead, check your children's bedrooms and see what they have in there. His mother added 12-year-old kids should be at home doing schoolwork and then going to bed. She also went on to say he wanted to be an engineer and said that after his eye surgery, he planned to finish his education. He said, Mum, I'll be shining, I'll be shining. Don't worry, I will help you in life. The father said he feels sorry for the parents of his son's killers but needed to see justice. So he said, the boy's responsible. Don't have to be locked up for life. I just want it to be fair. The couple said they couldn't eat for a week through shock. After first, Sean's friend phoned to tell them that he'd been murdered before police followed up to confirm any parents' worst news 30 minutes later. They said their surviving child is at a loss of the death of a sibling. They said it's very hard for his sister because they always spoke to each other. After he passed away, we were on the porch. She started crying and said, Mummy, I have no brother. It's just me alone. I told her she has a father and a mother. Detective... Inspector Damien Forrest, who led this investigation, said the weapon was a large machete that really no person who doesn't need it as a tool of their trade should have any reason to own. Obviously, originally it would be a guarding tool, although the facts of this case means we can't say for certain how the weapon came into the possession of the suspects. There is some evidence that suggests that one of them had tried to purchase knives on the internet. Now, the West Midlands police area actually has the highest rate of night crime offences in England and Wales. So these stats show that offences involving a blade per 100,000 of the population in the force area totaled 180 up from 167 in 2022 and the London Metropolitan Police Force total was 165. West Midlands Police, um, which was actually placed into special measures back in November, said it had been working hard to improve the force. At the time, Deputy Chief Constable Scott Green said the fall was more than for any other force. He said it had dropped around 6 or 8%. I've been working hard over the past 12 months to improve the force. And since changing our operating model in April last year, we have made substantial and sustained improvements in some important areas. I don't think that's the case, though. So since 2023, there's been 5,324 knife crime offences in the West Midlands. Absolutely shocking, guys. Back to the story, Jonathan Rowe, the senior Crown Prosecutor for the CPS West Midlands, said Sean C. Harhi was an incredibly brave young man with a world of opportunities at his feet. Sean suffered traumatic injuries after being ruthlessly targeted by defendants who had a fixation with violence and were roaming the streets looking for a potential victim. This was a horrifying and random act of brutality perpetrated by two 12-year-olds who should have not been spending their time arming themselves with a machete and preparing to take life. They should have been at home doing their own work. Today's conviction should send a clear message to those who feel it appropriate to arm themselves in knives or blades. No matter how you may try to justify it, you will face the consequences of your actions. All our thoughts remain with Sean's family and friends at this difficult time. Guys, once again, it's a real sad story coming out from the streets of the West Midlands. And as the parents of the deceased said, if you've got children of that age, just have a look in their rooms. See if they are carrying. You might think they're good kids, but you just never know what they might have. And potentially... They could take somebody's life with it. Rest in peace, Sean. My condolences go out to your family. It's your boy, GC. Keep it locked. Keep it real.